Hello, good evening, and welcome to the sports segment here on the Joy News Prime. Uh, with me, Oreko Ampofo. We start off with boxing, and that's because Imano Tego is upbeat about his chances against former WBC inter interim champion Ryan Garcia as the two boxers go head to head on April 9 in San Francisco, Texas. Now, some analysts say this is Tego's toughest bout in his career, but the 33 year old Ghanaian insists Garcia has never fought a boxer like him before. Yeah, I think Ryan, I respect Ryan a lot. People respect Ryan too. But I know Ryan, he has power. He has everything. But that very day, I don't, I don't know the, uh, the style of boxing Ryan brings to the table. The same thing if you Ryan Garcia go to watch my video. The last time I saw Ryan in management and in Oscar, he, he, he work all he work on my style I, I I wear the video I start laughing because I know he, he, he work on wrong thing because me my style different I have a lot of time to fight by right that very day people can see Ryan Garcia I know I have power I know I have speed with him mm -hmm. so so in other words you think that he's working on the wrong things like what you see him in the gym doing is not gonna work against your style. Yeah, me too. I don't watch Ryan Garcia because I don't think if I, I, I watch Ryan Garcia, he help me. He don't help me because I know if you Ryan Garcia have something that very day, he bring to the to, to table to showcase to anyone. Me too, if I have something, I bring to table. But if I go to watch Ryan Garcia, maybe Ryan Garcia fight with this person. He fight different style with that person. Mm -hmm. If I go to watch that fight, I train with that plan. Ryan Garcia come with me he changed that style i have myself problem right i get myself problem that's why i don't mean 33 fighters always i don't watch my opponent if mm. you have something if you enter the ring to bring that something to table to showcase to anyone but i know round one i start no ring as in the ring okay does it does it bother you that they're marketing this fight as the return so the return is not talking about you. It's only talking about Ryan. How do you feel about that? I'm okay for that because I don't care because mm -hmm. I know that people, you don't know me. That's why I mock me. But after fights or if I enter the ring, I start a fight. You see everybody can appreciate my fight because I know I bring best to table. Well, we'll continue building up to that big belt this weekend, but Black Stars coach, assistant coach George Barton wants players eligible to play for the national team to be pursued to strengthen the three-time World Cup participants in this year's Mundial. The Aston Villa under-23 coach has been speaking exclusively to Joy Sports. Uh, they are young uh, and we are in transition. Um, the expectations of having to qualify it would be higher, I understand that, but we have to try and stay grounded because World Cup stage is not a stage that you can think of uh, going there and, um, you know, you cannot underestimate any country. It's high level. Um, so I hope that, whether it be us or a new technical team, I hope that they will manage to get some of the players that are eligible to play for the national team um, on board to make the competition stronger uh, and, and then give ourselves, Ghana, uh, a better platform, a better team to go to the World Cup and try, I'm using the word try because I'm careful, try to make an amends, um, you know, because it's, 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 a, it's a high level stage with countries that have players of, uh, of high level. Um, at the moment, everybody's well aware that there are some outstanding players playing in Europe that are, are capable to play for Ghana, who are eligible to play for Ghana. And I think it's down to the FA, uh, whether to be us once more or the new technical team, to try their hardest to get those players on board. It will help Ghana a lot going forward. Well, George Watton was one of the four-man technical team who guided Ghana to its 2022 World Cup uh, honour. 
Now remember, uh, after they, they did this by beating their neighbors, Nigeria, over two legs. Now Bordeaux defender Gideon Menta, who played a key role in Ghana's qualification to the Mundial, wants the Otoado led team maintained. So I mean, um, me being a player, uh, being part of the playing body, I, mean, I think uh, we, we we love the atmosphere um, around these this three uh, these three coaches. I mean, Didi Ramani, Otoado, and George Watson. So. Um, and and the main part of of this whole thing is um is is for them giving me the confidence and then they giving me the belief that um uh, this is this is what we want you to do and then this is this is how we want you to play. They gave me they gave me a role in the team, not just as as the young boy who was coming to the team, but they grew, they gave me a role in the team and they gave me uh, the trust. So um I mean moving up, I would I would I would I would love to work with um coaches like this, you know, and then um um going to the World Cup where I know is the is the biggest stage. Um, I think I think um, it will be more easier for us if we if we still go with this uh, with this um, this whole team. I mean the players, most of the players, and then also the technical team. So I think um, if we're gonna have them to the World Cup, why not? I mean it's gonna be like one of the greatest things also to have in the national team. Well, let's talk about uh, the younger sisters of the Black Stars, and that's the Black Princesses who have made it to this year's FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in Costa Rica. Ghana has never gone past the group stage in the tournament, but the chairman of the Black Stars Princesses Management Committee, Linsford Asamoah, believes the team would excel if they prepare early for the tournament. We have seen all the qualified matches and we have made our own assessments and very soon we beat the leadership of the Ghana Football Association to give us our reports, a proper program that will prepare the team to the World Cup and ensure that the obstacle or the challenges that we face during the group stages, we can overcome it and progress to 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 the fathers. Um, it's not easy to do that, but first of all, we need the team need to come and prepare the girls. We need all sectors, physio, dietitian, everybody on board, making sure that we run the team professionally to attain the results. We can't just go ordinary and get results and. With the support that the Vice President and the Chief of Staff has pledged, we are hopeful that we will get the necessary support to ensure that we fulfill our aims and objectives. Yes, of course, I, I personally want to bring the cup. But we, we all want you to bring the cup, but yes. what matters is do you have the materials to, to bring the cup? We, we, we have the materials. Well, they certainly do have the materials, and we'll be hoping that not just uh, the female uh, U team have the materials, but Ghana's hockey team also do uh, when they later go to Birmingham to represent the country in the 2022 Commonwealth Games. According to the president of the Ghana Hockey Association, Ben Kedi Asante, the hockey team is well prepared for the tournament. Preparations are going very well. As you recall, both our men and women's team have been invited to, to partake and participate in the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. And um, they've started off-site training, and probably a month before time, we would get them all to the hostel to train. But we are working on this in conjunction with the Ghana Olympic Committee, GOC, in terms of our preparatory efforts and in terms of facilities to actually help our teams actually partake in this in a very meaningful way. I think both our men's team and our women's team uh, well placed in Africa. Um, probably the women's team a little ahead of the men's, but we believe that the Commonwealth teams in Africa, which were exclude Egypt, for instance, gives us an opportunity to actually place even higher within the African contest. But Commonwealth, I think we would make a showing on behalf of Africa as a Ghanaian set of teams. Funding for what we call the lesser known sports um, could be improved. I think the government has done its part and is doing as much as they could. But we want to extend the call also to corporate entities to come and help us actually fund 
such trips and also such engagements. And we believe that certain corporate bodies that we have actually contacted will come through and help supplement what GOC has to be able to take our teams over to Birmingham. From hockey, let's move straight to rugby, where the national male and female teams have intensified preparations for next month's seven World Cup final shootout in Uganda and Tunisia. We have details for you in the following Joy Sports report. The national rugby team, the Eagles, are 100% focused on securing a ticket to their first ever seventh World Cup and they have left no stone unturned in their preparation for the final shootout scheduled for next month. The male rugby team, after their heroics in the pre-World Cup qualifier in Kumasi last year November, will be competing in Uganda for an enviable place in the seventh World Cup. To ensure the team is in good physical shape for the tournament, the Ghana Rugby Football Union, headed by Herbert Mensa, has introduced a series dubbed the Barbarians Sevens. Head coach of the Eagles, Love Mokuzurera, has underscored the importance of the weekly competition. So as you can see, we are using this tournament as a scale or as a way to see those guys who can also raise their hands if they can play national squad and also the guys who have already been playing in the national squad. Uh, we are taking this opportunity as well to work on our fitness, match fitness, uh, before we get in the tournaments. If you look at previous tournaments, we normally get in these tournaments, normally the day one, day first game, second game, we struggle because of uh, match fitness but this time around we are trying to work on that so much that when you get in the tournament we start off on high because the guys will be properly ready for contact because normally the most important thing is contact related fitness so we normally like that on the first day but we are preparing for that even for both men and women that's why we are playing these matches member of the male rugby team Percy Christian Adams is happy with the work ethic of his colleagues. You know, in rugby, we, 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 we don't joke because it's two uh, kind of forces coming together to collide or pass or do things together. So maybe if you limit your force and the other person, the opponent forces come and add to yours, maybe you can get hit or something like that. So you have to make it competitive, play as hard as you can, because what you do now on the field is what you play. Your, the, your training you do is what you play on the field. So if you train slow, you play slowly. If you train hard and you, you put in your maximum effort, when it's game time, you do the same thing. The female rugby team will also be in action next month. And after taking West Africa by storm, their main target is to book a historic ticket to the Women's Seventh World Cup. Here is Dorothy Oswanza. The team's target is to qualify for the World Cup and the Commonwealth Games. And then we are trying hard as possible to get girls, get boys, train hard, get our fitness level up there to where the other teams will meet them and then we'll play to their level and then we'll win and come back to Ghana. Very impressed because since we started with week one, um, we saw our disadvantages and what we are supposed to do and what we are not supposed to do. And as ongoing, our coach is talking to us on things that we are supposed to do and not to do. So we are, we are trying to do this every week to see our mistakes. But by the time we go to the tournament, we know our mistakes and then we correct them and then we play better there. The Eagles are keen on soaring to higher heights and only lack of hard work can clip their wings. As you've seen from today's bulletin, uh, so many national teams have been preparing in earnest for the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Now, one of them is the national table tennis team, and the team's captain, Derek Abrefa, joins me in studio. Uh, just a reminder that he is six-time winner of the Sports Writers Association of Ghana Awards. Uh, he's also the current national grandmasters winner, and he's the highest-ranked Ghanaian table tennis previously. He was ranked number 26, 206. Uh, in the world, but due to COVID-19 and not participating in frequent international tournaments, uh, he's now dropped to 413, and uh, he's also the current national ten ten table tennis uh, champion. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, Derek, and uh, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Uh, let's start off with, uh, I like the part in the introduction where you said you are the highest ranked Ghanaian, but unfortunately due to COVID, you couldn't participate in a lot of competition. So your ranking has come down a bit. How has that been in terms of, you know, challenges being posed towards your career? 
Uh, the thing is, uh, since COVID came into the system, it affected a lot of areas. In, to be specific, uh, sports. You know, a lot of sports tournaments were cancelled. A lot of competitions were postponed to this year. So many tournaments. And since this, the beginning of this year, a lot of tournaments has, has taken place. But uh, because of COVID-19, the sponsorship level has gone down. Getting sponsorship to go and participate in those uh, tournaments, uh, it's, it's, it's a problem now, yes. Uh, our Ghana Table Tennis Federation is doing its best to make sure we take part in every international tournament before the Commonwealth Games. Last year, the latter part of last year, we had some series of international competition, one in Cameroon, one in uh, Nigeria, and I think we were able to grab a silver medal in the men's doubles, and then in Cameroon, we lost at the quarterfinals to the winning team, which is the Egyptians. I think it helped us, though we can still do more. Mm. Well, or speak of doing more, this would be your fourth uh, Commonwealth Games. Uh, you've come from far, with your first all the way in 2010 as a young tennis player. How would you summarize your previous experiences? It hasn't been easy. Everybody knows Commonwealth Games is like the Olympic Games, though Olympic Games is a bigger platform. Uh, Commonwealth Games is also a, a, an opportunity for Ghanaians to show what they have, the talents, what they can do to the world. And uh, every athlete, every sportsman, it is their dream to also take part in Commonwealth Games. Uh, as we speak now, we, we've already qualified, table tennis has qualified, and then there are other disciplines that are still playing their qualifiers for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, the experience hasn't been bad. Uh, it's been sometimes on and off. We are able to make it to the round 16, sometimes round of 32, depending on the preparation that we get uh, before the games. And uh, how, how many table tennis uh, players have qualified so far from Ghana? Well, for table tennis, we have, the, we have seven events. We have the team events. We have the doubles events. We also have the men's doubles, mixed doubles, and the singles. In all, uh, a team of four players uh, qualifies for the table tennis men's team, and then a team of four players for the uh, women category. Um, we're, we're speaking, you know, before you came into the studio, and you were explaining the link between the Commonwealth Games and the African Games and how preparation is key because whenever you have a Commonwealth game, you know the next year there's the African Games. And coincidentally, this year after the Commonwealth Games, the next African Games will be here in Ghana, actually, 2023. Uh, how have the preparations been so far? Well, the African Games uh, mostly is affected by how we prepare towards the Commonwealth Games. Uh, we, you, you can testify with me that when you go to other countries for games like African Games and Commonwealth Games, they, they start a two-year preparation, a, a year preparation. And Commonwealth Games is just a year to African Games. So anytime uh, the team gets a good preparation for the Commonwealth Games, it affects the African Games positively. Example, when we went to Congo Brazzaville in uh, 2015, uh, we were able to move for a training tour, about a man training tour for the Commonwealth Games, which was held in 2014 in Glasgow, Scotland. And that training tour exposed us a lot. We learned a lot. We had international uh, to tournaments with some clubs in Europe. And uh, I tell you, the experience was just so much that uh, the following year, African Games, we grabbed uh, a lot of medals that year. Mm. And uh, let, let's focus on the table tennis team. How has it been like? Uh, we have just a few months, you know, heading into the tournament itself. How is the, the, you know, the camp feeling ahead of the tournament? Is it, is it one that you are very confident that with what you've, you know, done in terms of preparations, you can go to the Commonwealth this year and make an impact? Yes, this year's Commonwealth Games, I think we're going to make an impact and then uh, bring medal to Ghana because the last Commonwealth Games, we were able to progress to the round of 16. We didn't lose to just anything. We lost to England, and England is one of the world-ranked players when it comes to table tennis. And uh, we are having some 
series of tournaments next month. Uh, GTT has put some tournaments in, program, in, in, in place for the team that will be going. Uh, as for the Ghana Olympic Committee, uh, they are also doing their best. I think uh, they can do more because the athletes and everybody is ready to go all out this year and then make Ghana proud. Well, you speak of making Ghana proud. You captain the, or you were the leader, captain of the team at the African Games, and uh, you you ensured uh, that you, you went beyond your table tennis disciplines. Uh, you will probably be another leading figure in the team or the delegation that travels uh, to England in a few months' time for the Commonwealth Games. Uh, what has the you know communication been? Uh, between you and other disciplines? Because I know you just don't stay in, you don't only stay in table tennis, you're also in other disciplines as well. What have you heard in terms of how they are getting ready uh, for the tournament so far? Well, I've had conversation with uh, colleague national players in other disciplines like the boxing, and then uh, I've also had interaction with the badminton team. Uh, the athletics team, I, I, I've not really had uh, an interaction with uh, the athletics uh, players, but I've been monitoring them as uh, Commonwealth Games participants. I, I think uh, all the disciplines are doing their best to put their players in good shape for the tournament. And I think uh, the support from the government and other private organizations coming in, uh, we are going to make a difference this year. Because for the, because of the COVID-19, the number of teams that will be participating in the Commonwealth Games have been reduced. Yes, so you 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 get into the medal zone. Though it's going to be tough, but with some kind of efforts and some wins in the, from the group stage, can progress you into the medal zone. All right, thank you very much, uh, Derek Abrifa, and all the best in the upcoming Commonwealth Games. We'll definitely uh, keep tabs on all the development in terms of the preparations as well. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, before we wrap up, uh, just uh, news coming in from the Champions League game. Uh, is that Chelsea have been beaten at home by three goals to one uh, by Real Madrid in the first leg of the quarterfinal stage of the competition. And remember that the second leg would be played next week. We'll be bringing you a live commentary of that game as well. And my name is Uri Kuwampo, and that's how we wrap up the sports here. You can get some more sports stories on my draw online for Slash Sports, uh, where Fatal Isaku has been announced as a sporting CP player officially on a five-year deal with a 60 million euro uh, release clause. And then you can also visit our social media handles at JoySportsGH on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So we'll see you again same time tomorrow to bring you the latest in the world.